Welcome. In this video, we're going over how to create micro fractures and some additional information on banded sleeping and how all of this works to help us grow after puberty. Let's begin. So in theory, we can grow longer bones after puberty by creating micro fractures. This will be through running, jumping, lifting weights. I'll get into the specifics later. But basically, anything that creates impact, tension, or compression can result in cracks within the bone matrix. And this mechanical loading will create higher osteoblast and osteoclast activity. I'll link a study down below, but essentially, it just says that bone turnover, right, the addition of new bone and taking away old bone happens faster. This will allow us to reform the bone easier because plastic deformation of bone is really, really hard. There's like a whole video that I need to make on plastic deformation. There's this MIT study from 2009 that I'll share in that video, but that is its own video that is to come later. Now, what's next after creating micro fractures? We stretch them out with banded sleeping at night. I've got two videos for this, so feel free to check those out. And because bone is capable of plastic deformation, some examples are rickets. That's like a disease where nutritional deficiencies cause the bowing of leg bones. We've got corsets, right? Actually altering the rib cage in women who wear it. Foot binding back in China to make feet smaller. And the appearance of smaller feet was highly valued. There's also orthodontic braces. This one's a little bit different because it works with the head and the jaw. And there are plates within our head that move around. So it's not quite like leg bones or arm bones, but I thought it was worth mentioning because it was an example of how force will win over bone because teeth and the skull can be changed just by constant force over a long period of time. Now, again, none of this is guaranteed, but my hypothesis and my claim is that over months, maybe years, we can grow longer tibias and femurs, and this will make us taller. Now, one great example is Devin Larratt. I've got a video linked down below where he exclusively trains his right arm for two years. It, it's mirrored here, but this is his right arm. It's considerably bigger than his left arm. And you can see where the carpal bones sit as his elbows are on the table. His left sits right at the black line and a little bit above the black line, that's where his right carpal bones sit. So we can tell that the right forearm actually grew in length and that also causes his right knuckle to sit a little bit higher than his left knuckle. The difference is a little more apparent once you look at how his fingertips sit when his arms are straight and elbows are on the desk. Now, I think the difference in bone growth is actually a little more exaggerated than just this little fingertip because his right hand is actually tilted at an angle here. He saw this crazy difference without banded sleeping, right? It was all unintentional and he even saw it in his late forties. So this is kind of incredible. He gained limb length well out of puberty and he did it by just training his right arm for two years without that constant force of eight to 10 hours every single night. This just goes to show limb lengthening is possible at any stage of life. Now, I, if you want to argue about this, like lens distortion angles, I want you to go check out the video for yourself because the difference is pretty obvious. Now, Blue Label, like this one comment underneath this video kind of read my mind and said, imagine how many hundreds of micro fractures it took for his bones to build back longer. Another guy said, and a good amount of growth hormone. And a third guy says, that's also what I've been thinking. It's not like he's a young guy where his bones readily heal and strengthen. This is absolutely insane. My thoughts exactly. Now let's move on. The MIT paper, from 2009 called Plasticity and Toughness in Bone. This, I, I took kind of some of their measurements and in a later video, I'll go over like the physics of it, applying Hooke's law, like a simple model of how much force it would take to plastically deform the bone and make it longer. But I just wanted to show that in their opening statement, they claim that bones are full of microscopic cracks and the character of the bone, their structure, makes them remarkably resistant to fracture. So bones were really, really tough, 
but they do have a lot of microscopic cracks, which we can take advantage of. So now that we've covered that it's not all genetics, let's address the people that claim it's genetics and that call height a day after saying, oh yeah, genetics will govern how tall I will become. Now, my main counter to this is that many people pass their genetic potential, right? There's this equation, mom's height plus dad's height plus five inches, divide by two, you get your predicted like genetic ceiling. So many people surpass this. They're not looking beneath the surface at HGH, estrogen, right? Hormonal balances, sleep cycles, nutrition, including vitamins, minerals, aminos, peptides, this kind of stuff. They're ignorant to the idea that there are so many things beneath the surface and they don't really question the things that society tells them. This goes for 99% of people. What they do is they see what already exists out in the world and they use that to form their beliefs, right? This is kind of how science works. But I just wanted to say that I think it's actually the other way around. You kind of have to see it in your mind first before you bring it into reality. All famous experiments existed in someone's mind. They went out and did it. And because it worked, that's why reality is the way it is now. So it's not that reality exists and that's how it should shape our beliefs. I think it's the other way around. I hope that makes sense. So really quick, height is 60 to 80% genetic. So I do agree, large part of it is genetics, but the rest of it is environmental. This will be nutrition, lifestyle, and this can affect our height a lot. An example is back in Europe, when we transitioned from hunter-gatherers to farmers from 8,000 BC to 3,000 BC, men lost an average of six inches in height over this period. And this was mainly because of nutrient deficiencies as well as a more sedentary lifestyle, right? They weren't chasing down anything they could get. And as a result, eating a lot of diverse food groups, they would kind of focus on what was easier to grow and they would just grow a lot of that one thing and eat a lot of that one thing. Let's discuss the issues with growing longer bones before I get into the microfracturing method. So muscles, tendons, ligaments, these need to accommodate our longer bones, right? But I think it's actually a little bit backwards. The longer bones can only come after the muscles, tendons, and ligaments have been stretched out. So we need to perform some sort of stretching, like a stretching routine to take care of the muscles. And then if we have a high collagen and protein intake, this should help the tendons and ligaments lengthen through banded sleeping, for example. And with very slow changes, right, we're not going to see like two inches of height per month. We're going to see maybe a few millimeters of bone. And this reasonable amount of growth will cause a reasonable amount of hyperplasia. The tenocytes, fibroblasts, right, our tendon and ligament cells will create more collagen and lengthen naturally and at a very slow rate. So I think this isn't too much of an issue. We just let the muscles, tendons, and ligaments stretch first, and then the bones come after once everything is in place. Now, onto the methods. Again, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, not medical advice whatsoever, and I'm not promising results, but I do believe in this process. And although it's gonna be a long and hard process, I believe it will pay off. So do all of this at your own risk. Number one is to run on a hard surface. That'll be your concrete, your dirt trails, blacktop, whatever you can find. I'm currently doing three to five miles every day. The other day I did six miles. Yesterday I did five miles. And I'm hoping to increase my mileage soon just to create more microfractures. And I'm not sure if I should be doing this every single day or every other day for rests. This is something I'm still experimenting with. So if you guys find something while you're experimenting as well, do let me know down in the comments or through my Instagram DMs. That would be really, really awesome. So what I currently advise is three to five miles every single day, five days a week. That's what I'm currently doing. Next, we've got Maasai jumps, right? A lot of people can't go outside. They can't go running. Maybe it's not safe or they just don't have a suitable place to go running. It's perfectly fine, but that should not be your only excuse, right? You should find a workaround and Maasai jumps, plyometrics, jumping jacks with ankle weights 
can be done in place in like a small confined spot as long as you have a little bit of room above your head to perform it. You should start small and you should work up to eight to 10 pounds of ankle weights per leg. And you should do these for 100 to 500 reps. This should kind of emulate the running on a hard surface type of exercise. Now three, you can also switch it up, right? If jumping isn't for you and you don't wanna do it every single day, you can also run in place with ankle weights and this can be done for 30 plus minutes to maximize those micro fractures and then boom, straight to bed, straight to sleep into that banded sleeping setup. I'm hoping this all makes sense. If you do have questions, leave them down below. Now methods for arms. So some people do want to lengthen their wingspan on top of all this, right? We want our arms to be proportional to total height. I currently have a pretty long wingspan, so I'm actually pretty fortunate. I don't have to worry about this, but same deal. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but if Devin Larratt could do it, then you could probably do it too. This would be through high impact, high tension, high compression as always. And I want you to use your creativity. I've listed some things out such as baseball, boxing, arm wrestling, weighted dips and pull-ups, farmer carries, rock climbing, gymnastics, heavy bench press, and explosive push-ups. These should create the, the high impact forces, tension forces, or compression forces that you may need to create those micro fractures within your arms. Now, if you can combine this with a lot of hanging from a bar, as well as stretches to remove that compression force that a tight muscle will put on the bone, then you should be golden. So I want you to stretch out your wrists, your forearms, your biceps, triceps, and shoulders. A good movement for shoulders is the PVC pipe pass-through. If not, you can do arm circles. The rest you can easily find on Google, right? Wrists, little wrist circles, forearms, this thing, or this thing. Sorry if I'm getting cut off. I usually cut this into a circle after in post-production. Then triceps, obviously this one is awesome and then shoulders, PVC pipe pass-through. So let's move on to additional information. I know the video is getting a little bit long, but bear with me here. We're getting into some saucier information now. One, you should do this right before bed. Otherwise you'll be standing or sitting all day and you'll kind of allow for slight calcification of your bones while in that micro fractured state. And if everything's being compressed because you're standing or you're sitting, then they're gonna heal in that compressed state. So I'd advise you to just do this right before bed and then maybe use banded sleeping on top of all this to get that stretch out. So I don't know how you do that for your arms. You may have to get creative, but this is what I'd advise. Do it right before bed. The main idea, the combination of regular and prolonged mechanical stress for high bone turnover plus regular and constant tension, right? High force over a long period of time should be able to reform bones. I can't specify any sort of rate at which you'll change, right? I can't say, oh, you'll gain one centimeter per month. I can't say you'll gain three inches this year and then two inches the next. So I'm sorry, I can't say. This obviously varies from person to person based on hormonal balances, nutrition, the amount of tension force in your setup, all sorts of things, right? So I just wanted to say, sorry, I can't specify a rate at which you'll grow. This is hugely experimental. Now, additional information too, use supplements to speed up the process. I have a whole supplement video. I'm currently taking a bunch right now. Pretty much every single supplement that I listed in that video, actually, that'll be mainly your minerals, vitamins, and peptides for bone repair. Also, you can try using a massage gun to speed up orthodontic rate. So this will be higher for higher bone metabolism. You'll want a high vibration at 120 Hertz. I don't know how long, I don't know how many days you have to do this. I just know that it's a potential way to increase bone metabolism. Also, you may want to sleep on a hard surface. Over time, this will correct those postural tilts just because when you're sleeping on your back on a hard surface, you'll kind of line everything up in that straight line, assuming your ground is nice and flat, it will allow for a better pull with banded sleeping. So these two things, kind of experimental, they're just ideas I'm throwing out there, but they're things to try if you have the time or if you have the means to do so. 
Now let's cover one quick doubt before I hop off for this video. Why don't all runners or even like Olympic weightlifters, people that do heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, shrink, right? If, if microfractures are being created all the time, why don't they shrink? Well, I think the main reason is duration. They're doing it for a lot less than eight to 10 hours a day, every single day. But also they've got a good diet and a healthy amount of HGH is released during their exercise. So that means new bone is being brought in and there should be no net loss. If anything, the density of the bone is actually going up. Also, if they're doing it with proper form, there should be no loss of height due to posture or worn out discs. And on top of this, if they're doing a lot of stretching to keep their muscles nice and loose, then they shouldn't lose any sort of postural gains from that either. If you have any other doubts, do comment them down below. I'm obviously super open to hearing other new ideas and suggestions about all this since it is experimental. So my sources, I'll link these down below. With all that, thank you for hanging out. If you made it to the end, please do like or sub to see more. With that, peace.